This is my breadboard for the servo control project. Like the LED blink project, we have a six pin header for programming the microcontroller, as well as a decoupling capacitor. And again, the reset pin is tied to voltage high with a resistor to keep the microcontroller from resetting. Now the differences begin here, starting with the white wire or uh, wires which are connected to a couple of push button switches which are also connected to a couple of uh, pull up resistors. These will keep the uh, input pins high until the buttons are pressed. Um, now we've also got a uh, header for the servo. Um, the servo will plug in here and it'll get its control signal from this yellow wire here which is connected to the output pin. There's a couple linear voltage regulators here, um, one for the microcontroller and one for the servo itself. Now let's transition into how the control signals look. You're looking at the display of an oscilloscope here and let's get it started. I have a couple of cursors marking the rising and falling edges of the pulse, and it may be hard to see, but the cursors have a difference of 800 microseconds or 0.8 milliseconds. So the pulse has a duration of 0.8 milliseconds. The server I'm using is controlled by pulse width modulation, meaning that the rotational position will change as I change the pulse width here. By holding one of the switch buttons, I've increased the pulse width to maximum width of 2.25 milliseconds. Using the specs of the servo, I set up the microcontroller to allow pulse widths between 0.75 and 2.25 milliseconds, with 20 milliseconds between the rising edges of consecutive pulses. The time between rising edges doesn't change, so even as I push the other button to decrease the pulse width, the time between rising edges remains the same at 20 milliseconds. Finally, we can look at the servo movement as it's sitting here hooked up to my breadboard. As I press and hold one button, the servo will move to its maximum position and then as I press and hold the other, it'll move back. The servo only moves as long as the button is held, so I can move it back and forth to any position by pressing one button or the other. So that's the servo control project.